I was in a car accident um, in 1986. In 1986, I decided not to have the back surgery. I broke, I fractured three vertebrae, and I let the uh, surgery go until about 2000. In the year 2000, they did the back surgery. I was a Marvel Mason at the time, and they were not expecting my back muscles to be so strong. So the surgery, instead of six hours, ended up taking 12 hours. At that point in time, they, I ended up getting a priapism about a month, about two months after that, and they couldn't determine whether it was actually the surgery itself or one of the medications that they were giving me. Actually, in the, in the beginning of it, I, I thought it was funny. You know, it's like I, it was, it was kind of like a joke to my wife. I'm going, hey, look at this, you know. And uh, then, you know, that was, as I said, I went to sleep, so it was about four hours in time. And uh, the funniness kind of wore off, you know. I, I went into the emergency room, and that was kind of a neat experience how to explain that uh, you have a priapism, which I had no idea what that was, even at this point in time. And then, you know, when I got to the point where I was told that basically there's a specialist that has to come in, uh, the seriousness kind of set in a little bit more. And uh, the emergency doctor that I saw ended up having to call in um, a specialist. And at the time, the specialist told me within the four hours time, the coagulation and what they did is they, they vented the blood to try and get it out where basically they flush you with saline and the saline was not getting rid of the coagulated blood. The purpose, the purpose of a stent is to relieve or be able to be able to let blood go in and blood go out. The, how you get an erection is you get uh, blood that goes into an area, that area holds the blood and then releases after the point of erection. The, what the stent does, the stent actually holds it open so your blood's able to flow in and flow out. The problem with the stent is you're not able to actually hold the blood, so that prevents you from getting an erection. I got a, a semi-rigid prosthesis, put a, a, a prosthesis on the right side and the left side. Immediately I had problems with the left side, so after going into surgery a week later I had to go back into surgery to remove the left side. So the right side was okay. The prosthesis could actually move itself into the tissue and actually erode through the tip. And that's actually what ended up happening is it eroded through the tip about four years later. And then there was a removal process again on that. Well, I, I would say, I would say on that one, uh, I, I guess some doctor escaped from the SS, and I happened to find him. And uh, this gentleman decided that uh, when it broke through the tip, without any anesthesia or anything else, he decided to reach in there with the needle nose pliers and just try and pull it out. And he broke it off, and um, I can't even. I give you a pain level. I'm, I've had a lot of uh, injuries and I have a very high pain level and I definitely saw white stars on that one. It was, it was rough. At that point in time the outcome ended up being that uh, I would go back in for surgery and they would have to take the uh, semi-rigid out and I consulted with many other doctors and the technology at that point in time, the doctors were very afraid to try and do anything else due to the scar tissue that had already been formed. So the, the outlook coming forward was not very good and mentally, it, it really plays a really tough game on you mentally. As I said, you know, I was a young man at the time in 37 and you know, I, I could re really relate to people that ended up losing a limb at that, that point in time because it, it was almost the same type of loss. Luckily, I have a very good wife that's very understanding, and um, my wife was more worried about my health than every, anything else, and she tried to make the best of everything there. I, I think of my wife, you know, she played more of a, a calming element than anything, but for me, I mean, you know, going day after day, not knowing if you're ever able to have, ever able to have sex again or not, just really 
plays on you, you, you know, you have your day-to-day -day activities, but that's always in the back of your mind. Well, my actually journey to get to Dr. Gelman, I have an HMO, and HMOs are very tough to get anybody out of your network. Um, I fought the process for probably two to three years that I, I went through several urologists. I probably had gone through 10 of them. And, you know, as I said, unfortunately with the HMO, um, you need to kind of go where they're going to send you and ask the right questions. And, and as I said, most of the urologists were afraid to touch this due to the scarring and everything else where they, they didn't have the confidence, the level or the ability to move forward. The HMO decided that they would not let me see them. So another, another year passed by about that time and finally I, I pushed them enough where they gave me the ability to see uh, Dr. Gelman. Yes, I went with Dr. Gelbin because the confidence level that he was able to give me back made me have the ability to, make, to, to go through with him as a surgeon. As I said, when, if this surgery fails, it's very mentally disruptive. And it, at the end of the day, he said, no matter what happens, he'll be there at the end of the day and we'll get it to work. The thing with Dr. Gelman is he's very confident with what he does. He's very positive about what he does. He's passionate about the work that he does. And uh, it, it was just the, the level of confidence he had that he can do this and he can get it done. And, and he personally deals with his patients instead of staff and anything else. And that, that was what help me keeping kept uh, keep moving forward and also my wife was in the background helping also too the results of the surgery was very effective we were able to start inflating it and uh, at that point in time we figured out we had something successful that was going to work I would say it, it improved my quality of life on a lot of levels number one I, I think with what had happened here it, it, for lack of other expressions, it kind of made you bitter. You know, here I am in my mid 30s, late 30s, and, and all of a sudden my lifestyle has been taken away. And trying to move forward thinking, is my lifestyle going to change or is this going to be life, my lifestyle forever? And so after the operation ended up being successful there was actually it was I was able to turn a corner and realize that there is going to be life after all this that was happening and you know I can keep my wife happy and you know fortunately I, I have a very strong marriage but you know there's always that thought in the back of your mind if I can't perform anymore will my not, wife not be happy you know because I you know it's important to keep my wife happy and everything else so as, as far as quality of life, it, it was just a, a huge difference of, of how I thought and, and being able to move forward and, and actually being able to get out of more of a negative atmosphere and change my, my thought process into a positive atmosphere. My message to others is don't, number one, don't let people say no to you. You got you to gotta stick with it especially if you're in HMOs which are out there to make their dollar you you really need to just keep pushing the situation don't give up I I'll put it this way at the at the end of the whole ordeal I was I'm a coin collector and I'm trying to figure out what do you give a doctor that has this type of skills and it's so positive and so willing to help you out, especially even when something failed, is what can you possibly give somebody for your appreciation to give back to them to let you know you appreciate the work that they did? And the only way that I found it is, is in coin collection, if you're buying new coins, they have a PF70 and an MS70, and that's a perfect coin. So my gift to Dr. Gelman at the end of this, I got him a, a, a American Silver Eagle at a, a MS70 rating, which is a perfect eagle. And that's where the doctor strives to be with every one of his patients was perfect.
and I thought it was uh, a very appropriate gift because, as I said, the, the gentleman put 100% into this and making sure it worked.